Hi everyone, welcome to Mr. Carlson's lab. It's that magic time of year again, and did you know these little lights right here have their own magic hiding right inside them? So when I say magic, think about this. Well, this little bulb right now is burnt out. It's an incandescent bulb, so it has a filament inside it. It's not an LED. So when a filament opens inside a bulb, the circuit opens. How are the rest of these bulbs staying lit with this little burnt out bulb in the string? So for example, I'll just remove the incandescent bulb get my fingers in here there we go so the bulb is out of circuit right now right but the rest of the string is now off even though it has a dead bulb so now if I put the dead bulb back in grab this here it's still dead but the rest of the string is glowing again what kind of magic is going on inside that bulb? Well, today I'll reveal that magic to you, of course, then it won't be magic anymore. But it really is quite a little, you know, I guess you could say a simple trick that engineers had to come up with to make these strings actually worth anything. So if you have, say, uh, 150 of these on a string or 100 of these little bulbs here on a string and one of them goes out, how do you find the one that's burnt out, right? Well, this makes it easy to find and it also keeps the rest of the string lit with a little bit of a catch that shortens the life of the rest of the string as well. So I'll get one of these bulbs here, we'll open it up, look inside, I'll make it fail, I'll show you how it fails, and then I'll show you the result. Here's a brand new replacement bulb for one of those light strings, and the magic is actually hiding right below this little green rim right here. So I'll get this bulb taken out of the green cup, mounted into a vise. I'll show you that the bulb works first, then we'll dissect the bulb, look inside, and I'll show you exactly how it fails. We're going to actually make it fail. We're going to make it do exactly what it does in the Christmas light string to make your Christmas lights stay glowing. Okay, power supply hooked up to my very ugly drill vise here. Touch that, there you go. Right, you can see the bulb is still working, no problems. So brand new bulb. So now what we're going to do is get inside the bulb and I'll get you right up close to the magic. So I cause minimal interference to the bulb. I want to open this as carefully as possible. So I'm going to slip the bulb into this little protective sleeve for just a moment. So I'll put it in right about there and I'll open up this nasty looking drill vise here. Hope I'm making some machinist cringe looking at this thing. Okay, so here we go. Because it makes me cringe too. So I'm going to put on some gloves because I don't want to cut myself on a sharp glass. So that's the pretty tight in there. I just want to make sure it's tight enough so that I don't actually crush the bulb, but I want to file a line in the glass here. You can usually tell it, you can feel it bite when it's ready to put a little line in there. Okay, so there is my little line in the bulb. And I'll just put this in here. There we go. And we have minimal interference to the bulb. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'll just get that mounted into the vise and zoom on into it. And we'll take a look at the magic. Every one of these incandescent bulbs has a little piece of tungsten wire inside it, and that's known as the filament. That's the part that glows inside an incandescent bulb, and usually it's either spot welded or pinched into the lead-in wires. As you see right here, you see these two little flat spots on the lead-in wire. Well, when you pass a current through the wire, the little tungsten filament under a vacuum will glow for you know, quite a period of time. If there is no vacuum in the bulb, so say it comes to air, say that it's leaking through the, you know, one of the little stem seals here, or say, you know, the bulb is cracked, what ends up happening is if oxygen gets into the bulb, 
the actual filament itself here will oxidize very quickly and it'll just burn up. So that's why sometimes you see a little, a uh, little bit of smoke inside the glass bulb, or sometimes you see, uh, you know, white discoloration on the inside of the bulb is because what's happened is the oxidization has happened and it's just burnt right up. Okay. Now, normally these bulbs just fail. They're, you know, put together pretty well. They usually fail either through rough handling or they'll fail through, say, just time. So, you know, you've had a long time, the Christmas lights have all been glowing for a long time, and over a long period of time, the tungsten breaks down, and then, of course, eventually it fails. So all of these bulbs are in series in the string, and that's why when I pulled that one bulb out, the rest of the string went out, right? Because you're breaking the circuit when you take one of these bulbs out. Now, technically, when this filament opens, you're also breaking that circuit. So what is remaking that circuit again? Well, the magic is in that little piece of wire right here. It's multiple turns around the two lead-in wires. What ends up happening is when the filament itself opens up, the voltage across these two terminals goes high, right? Because the rest of the string goes out, there's nothing pulling load. So this goes high. It goes high enough that it breaks down the insulation on this wire and then the wire shorts this out so it takes place of the filament now the resistance of this wire when it shorts is much lower than the filament so there is no glow and what happens is it basically just bypasses the bulb so it's like an automatic um, i guess you could say voltage sensitive switch so when the voltage goes too high across these two little points right here this breaks down and then shorts the connection and takes place of this. And it's just that simple. So in order to really see how this is working, we are going to need to break this filament and we'll measure the resistance across this. And then we'll slowly raise the voltage until we reach the breakdown of this wire here. And we'll watch it actually bridge these two terminals on a piece of test equipment. Okay, I've got to very carefully come in here without disturbing anything with these clippers and get rid of that little filament there. So, let's see here. Very hard to see on camera. There it is. Okay, so now it's open. So now we have an open connection. So technically, the bulb is mechanically burnt out. One of the leads on the bulb is pinched into the vise here, so that holds the broken bulb for me, and it also makes a connection to one of the leads. The other lead is just sticking up right here. And what we're going to do is measure the resistance on the meter here, and we should have an open connection because we just mechanically broke the filament. No voltage ever went high across these two little lead-in wires here, so nothing has broken down the insulation on that little coily piece of wire. The magic there has not broken down yet. So I'll short the leads of my meter to show you the meter's working. You see the meter's working, no problems there. So I'll make a connection to the vise, which is connecting to one lead of the bulb, and I'll touch the other lead of the bulb. And as you can see, nothing is happening. We get no resistance reading at all. So it's actually open. So now the reason it's open again is because we haven't raised the voltage across these leads high enough to break down the insulation on that wire. And that's what we're going to do right now. And I'll show you exactly how that makes connection. I have the bulb attached to my older capacitor leakage tester, and I'm going to use that to break this down. So one lead is connected to the vise and the other lead is connected to the one flying lead on the bulb there. So I'll move you over to the actual tester over here, just like so. So you can see the eye is open. And what happens is, I raise the voltage right here slowly. You can see all the little voltage increments here. I can raise this, and then as soon as you see that eye close, we have a circuit, all right? So it's broke the wire down at that point. At that point, I should be able to turn this back down and it should you know, stay close to the same. So let's give it a shot. I wanna make sure this is right down at three volts here because if it isn't, then uh, you know I'll have to be breaking another bulb to start this all over again. So click this onto leakage. And as you can see, it's applying about three volts right now to it, and the eye's open, so there's no connection. So I'll just slowly raise this until we see the eye close, and when the eye closes, we know that that little connection on the bulb, which you can't see anymore, it's out of the shot, is going to be uh, closed here. So here we go. So six volts, 10, 15, 
25, 50, 100. And it closed between 1 and 150. So right around 120, right, is where it closed. Now that we've broken down the insulation on that wire, let's see if the connection remains when I turn the voltage back down again. Technically it should, right? And there we have it. So the voltage is right back down at three volts and we still have a connection. So our Christmas light string would be glowing with that broken filament right now. So that little magic wire has done its job. And that's how these little light bulbs keep the rest of the string glowing when they burn out. If you learned something today, or you're just plainly enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and tap that bell symbol. That way you'll be notified as soon as I post a brand new video. In fact, I posted a brand new restoration video yesterday. You'll find that in my videos list. It's regarding a very neat old radio from 1939. You can see it come back to life and work the way it did way back in the 30s. I have an ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I share all my designs and inventions there as well. So if you're right into electronics and you want to learn more about electronics in a very different and effective way, definitely check that out. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on that link, it'll take you right there and you can check it out. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.